All right, greetings. Welcome to the stand up. We have a lot of people working in the lab that aren't going to be here today. Um, and I'll give a, a short rundown. There's some a lot of debugging work uh, going into the encoder for the downlink and plenty of progress. So I'll speak a little bit about what I did there. Um, what we did is convert the reference design HDL to a submodule so that it's automatically picked up and get cloned and everything. And what we're trying to do is point to the correct branch. So that's something that we uh, weren't doing correctly. Uh, we were picking up the main branch of the analog devices reference design. And this may clear up some problems or it might not, uh, but at the very least, it'll be the one that is designated to be compatible with our tools. What we did is we forked the analog devices reference design and then added our custom um, tackle script that that incorporates the encoder. And so what you need to do is uh, clone our repo and and the goal is for you just to type make and everything gets pulled in from DVB FPGA and the eventual uh, IP that we're doing for the rest of the design. And then you, it carries through where where you um, you make the the project and you have the HDL working, the XSA and Bitstream files are made, you can build Petal Linux, and then you can go off to the processor side where a lot of the magic uh, is happening. So having a submodule is great. Uh, it's a big step forward rather than the, the sort of the hard coded HDL reference design. Um, and so the thing that we're working on now is to make, make it force to use a particular branch so the the Vivado 2021 branch is what we want to use. And so that was that was something that I was working on and it didn't work last night. So <laughs> so just adding the branch to the dot git modules um, file wasn't enough. And and so um, we're currently fig figuring that out. So very in the very near future, this repository will be much easier to use and we'll pull in the correct uh, reference design from analog devices. So that's a very, very FPGA centric thing that's going on. Uh, Anshul and Thomas Perry are working on debugging uh, the problem with the register read writes. And we are moving towards um, doing some polar code work on the ultra scale dev board. That's the ZCU 106, not the ZC 706. Uh, and we will be, the next thing that we need to add to the transponder design is a polyphase filter bank. And that is the thing that receives the uplink. There is a lot of uplink work that has happened for Opulent Voice. Um, this is coming along rapidly. We're still targeting uh, three weeks from now, which is uh, DEF CON for a demo. And if all goes well, it's going to be over the air. Um, the What we were trying to do is uh, do this on, on computers uh, over the air with SDRs and, and possibly GNU Radio or, or you know, in order to just provide the source and sync to SDRs. And that's that's looking to be like the mainline effort. The stretch goal was to get this working on the HackRF Porta Pack. And we found an interesting problem with the um, FM transmitter application on the Porta Pack. So the Porta Pack is a board that 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 uh, it connects to the HackRF and it gives you a user interface and other other functions like a microphone, headset, jack, um, a, a screen, a touch screen, um, five-way buttons, you know, and and a, a, a rotary encoder with a press, you know, I mean, all the, all the usual stuff for a UI. Um, it's really neat. So if you if you're unfamiliar with the Porta Pack, go and check it out. It's neat. And so we have a variety of Porta Packs with hacker Fs, uh, all the way back to some of the original hardware from you know, a, a quote unquote real hacker F rather than a clone and a real porter pack and send then some some hacker F clones and some porter pack clones because the the original ones uh, were not not available when we went to buy them and so we went to use the the microphone transmit which has a number of modes we, we went straight to FM and transmitted over hand bands and the audio was terrible. So the, it sounds overdriven or overdeviated, it's splattery. And we started digging in because if we don't have high quality audio uh, in FM analog, then we're not gonna have a very good demonstration with the HackRF and the Porta Pack with our, uh, 
you know, our uplink as a as a demo, as a point to point demo. Um, and so that's been something that we we we've been working on, and we made a little bit of progress this morning. So what we found is that there's a the it's either zero or a twenty dB microphone boost amplification boost a mic boost, and it's set it's set uh, so the twenty dB is is in there in the code called Mayhem that that runs on the Porta Pack and provides all of these neat applications that you can use with your Hacker F and Porta Pack. So uh, what I did is I turned that off and uh, compiled it. It's neat. Uh, the way that you compile all these things is in a Docker container, which is really pretty nice. Um, loaded up the firmware and the splatter and what sounds like overdriven microphone input was reduced. And so the way that we describe this is is that we got back down to what what it sounds like a like a baby monitor. So if you listen to a baby monitor, that's now the voice quality for for FM. Uh, point to point from the HackRF uh, Porta Pack, uh, so it looks sort of like a really big HT when you put these boards together, um, and that's what we'd really like to do a demo with the uh, the Uplink protocol Opulent Voice. So lots going on with Uplink. Uh, the Uplink for our transponder would be received uh, frequency division multiple access channels that would be received at the transponder with a polyphase filter bank channelizer. And then all of that would be um, demodulated and decoded down and then packed into the uh, frames, the DVB-S2 frames that the encoder that we're working with. Um, that, and that's what the encoder does is that packages those things up for DVB-S2 frame and that is transmitted on the downlink. So it's a time division uh, multiplexing downlink. So that's where we are today. Uh, thank you to everybody that is working hard. Uh, got lots of reports and I've just given them. So uh, these all these people are actually working and and um, you know I'm 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 delivering the the results. Uh, I always prefer to to have people deliver it themselves, uh, but it's an honor to be able to pass along the hard work. So thank you to the many people working to make this uh, very ambitious design live. Uh, we are we're on track and uh, very happy with everything in all the remote labs. Um, the next, like I said, the next IP uh, for for this would be uh, to work on some polar codes that doesn't necessarily go into the transponder, but getting polar codes open sourced is uh, one of our goals. Um, we do have a, by the way, we do have a decoder project um, project work going on. And I'm look, very looking forward to, to releasing that. Uh, that would be something that the ground station receiver uh, would have to do. So to, to receive DVB-S2 decoding. Uh, we have at least two code bases in the works. One is general purpose uh, processor decoder. And uh, with a, we're helping a, a, a project uh, get that working, working better. And the other one is an FPGA implementation. So we'll have FPGA and general purpose. Um, we still are interested in a GPU, uh, graphical processing unit version of the decoder demodulator. Um, and we do have a head start. So there is some, some stuff in our, our repo. So if you're interested in helping with that, then welcome aboard, get in touch. Okay, so that rounds out the FPGA standup.